This is Jim Bergman with True Tech Tools and today we're going to go over how to measure airflow with a field piece STA2. Airflow is one of the most critical measurements that we make when we're in the HVAC industry. You have to make sure the airflow is correct otherwise you cannot get the charge correct. So I'm going to show you sort of step by step uh, how to set up to make an airflow measurement and how to use the STA2 to make the measurement and make sure that we get the correct results. This is the field piece STA2. It comes in a real nice foam padded case. Uh, you get the instrument and it's got a nice rubber boot on it and a magnetic uh, holder for the back. Uh, pretty much you pull it out of the case you got to hook up the probe right to the top of the instrument and there's a it is a keyed probe so you have to line up that mark at the top of the instrument slide it in and lock it in place. The handle itself is uh, velcroed together we'll pull that apart in just a minute. Alright, the field piece STA2 has two sensors in it. The bottom one here is actually a thermistor. That's to measure temperature. And we measure temperature just to get dry bulb temperature, but also what it does is it adjusts the air density of the instrument for changes in air temperature. Air temperature has the greatest effect on air density, so field piece uses that measurement to, um, to adjust it. And what it doesn't do though, however, is to compensate for humidity and barometric pressure. So if you're in an area of really high elevation or in an area of really low or really high humidity, you may have to make some additional uh, adjustments to the uh, density of the air to get your measurements exact if, if you really need to do that. For most guys, uh, temperature compensation will take care of about 95% to 98% of the inaccuracy of the measurement. So that's what the field piece chose to do. The top one here, and if you look really closer, you'll see a little tiny bead in the center. That top one is a glass thermistor, and what that does is it actually uh, passes a small amount of current through it, which generates a tiny amount of heat. And that heat is simply wicked away by the air moving over the over the sensor, and that will actually uh, then display as a velocity reading on the instrument. Now, Field Piece has done an excellent job of making this probe very directional, yet it's. Uh, uh, also will allow you to have changes in the on pitch of about 10% and really only affect the accuracy by 1 or 2%. So what it, as a hot wire goes, you can see this thing's in a little barrel, it's sort of, you know, pretty deep inside there. It's really not going to be affected by tiny little air currents or eddy currents in the duct. And so Field Piece has got an excellent design here as far as a hot wire goes. And for the cost, you really can't beat it. All right, so what we're going to do is, is I'm going to just walk you through how to get the instrument set up. And the first thing you got to do is turn the instrument on. And when you turn the instrument on, you have to hold it for a, two seconds to get it to come on. It's going to go through a countdown, which is going to allow the thermistor to warm up. And then it's going to turn on the display. We have a backlight over here we can turn on to turn on the display. And I'm just going to walk you quickly through how to set up the units and how to get the instrument set up for initial um, initial commissioning. So what you want to do is you're going to press and hold the data button. It's going to get you into a deeper menu and when you get that up there you're going to see that we get into the set and you can see it's set at feet per minute and we can hit enter for feet per minute or we can use the up and down arrows and we can scroll through the units. We got miles per hour, kilometers per hour, meters per seconds, feet per minute. Alright, so when we get the unit we want we press the enter key and then we see we have CFM or we can have liters per second or meters squared per hour. So we're going to hit CFM, we're going to hit enter, degrees Fahrenheit, enter, duct in inches, which I want to measure in inches, so I'm going to hit enter, and then it comes back up to the main menu. And this is pretty much all you have to do to get the instrument initially configured. All right, now that we have the instrument configured, we're going to go through, we're going to make a measurement, and we have to, to do that, we have to tell it what size duct we have. And I'm going to just walk you through the menus real quickly first on how this thing works. But if you, uh, if you look down here towards the bottom of your screen, you have a button that says duct. And I'm going to go ahead and press the duct button. And when I press the duct button, turn the backlight back on, I'll zoom back in here so you can see it. You can see I've got duct dimensions and uh, height and width. And I, I can either press enter on there or I can scroll down here and I can get free area or back to height, height and width. In this case I want to measure height and width so I'm going to press enter. When I press enter I have now a selection of do I want a square duct or do I want a round duct. In this case we're going to be measuring a square duct so I'm going to use the down arrow again get the square duct press enter again and now I can enter in my my inches. And I have to measure my duct these aren't the correct measurements but if I use my up and down arrow to change these and now I have my width and then back to the uh, 
back to the front screen where I can get my CFM measurement. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, walk you through how to make the measurements and walk you through uh, how to select the duct section and then we'll go through and we'll make an actual velocity and CFM measurement. All right, one of the most common questions I get when we're talking about measuring airflow is, so how the heck do I lay out the duct? I just want to go over that. What we're going to show you guys how to do today is actually call the log linear method of, of uh, duct measurement. And we're going to use traverse locations uh, using a chubby chef method. And so if we're looking at rectangular duct, what we're going to look at here is the fact is the width of the duct. Uh, don't worry about width and height. I don't know why they put that in the, in the drawing here. It really doesn't matter. What we're concerned about is just simply the length of the, of the side that we're measuring. And what they're showing you in this picture is simply a five-point traverse going this way and a six-point traverse this way. These are just typical locations. And if you're going to do that, what you have is on the bottom here is a five, a six, and a seven-point traverse. And there's multipliers here across the bottom. You really can't see on the screen here. But we've actually come up with a way to simplify that, and I'm going to walk you through that next. If we're doing a round duct here, we have uh, also a uh, log linear rule for a traverse of, uh, on, a, on diameters of a duct. And you can see two things here. What I want you to notice is, is that Number one, the spacing is not equal, okay? And the reason the spacing is not equal is because when air flows through a duct, it drags along the side of the duct and slows the air down. So air in the center of the duct here will tend to move faster than air will on the edges of the duct. And because we want average air flow, we want to use the chubby Chef method of measuring air because it's going to average that out. So it takes into account the, the perimeter of the duct, the center of the duct, and then averages out the total airflow to give us a, a very accurate representation of the airflow in the duct. And this is just simply a way to profile that to make sure that we get accurate results. All right, so what we did is we set up a quick chart just to make this easier for everybody to do. And instead of having to do the uh, log linear rules, we did the math for you. And so what we've got here is typical sizes of duct. Here I've got 18, I've got four, 18 on the top, and those go actually down to basically from four to 30 inches of duct. And what we can do here now is do a five-point traverse, and these are our locations. I'll show you how that works. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in here. And so because I have an 18-inch profile, these are my multipliers, 0 0.074, 0 0.238, 0 0.5, 0 0.712, 0 0.926. That doesn't matter. That multiplier stays the same for a five-point traverse no matter what the size of the duct is. So basically what we did was we multiplied this 18 times the multiplier, and then we have our inches, 1.33, 4.28, 9, uh, 12.82, and 16.87. Now the challenge becomes is most rulers aren't graduated in tenths of an inch. So to make this easier, what we did is we converted this to millimeters. So now what we're going to do is set up our, our, our traverse points at 34, 109, 229, 326, and 423 millimeters. All right, so now what we have to do is we've got to get the ductwork laid out. We've got to make sure we're drilling our holes in the proper locations. And what we did to make this easier again is I picked up a magnetic tape, which you again can get in a kit on our website for measuring airflow. And what I'm going to do is, this is a magnetic tape, and I'm simply going to set it right here in the duct. And so it makes it real easy to get the duct work laid out. I'm going to go ahead and I need to make sure that I set this at zero. Now one of the tricks here that a lot of guys forget is that we're always concerned with inside dimensions on a duct. So if this was a insulated duct, or a, or a um, duct board, and I had a three quarter of an inch wall thickness, I'd actually want to reposition my tape so that I took the offset of the wall here and moved the tape out, and then, I, and then I would actually make my measurement on the interior of the duct. So instead of being an 18 inch duct, if there was a one inch wall on each side, I'd be at a 16 inch duct. And lay out for my, my uh, five point traverse on a 16 inch profile instead of an 18 inch profile. So right now what I'm going to do, because this is a sheet metal duct, it's not insulated, it's in my basement here. I'm going to set this back at zero here, and I have this set up in millimeters just to make this thing easy to read. All right, so I'm going to make sure my tape's nice and level, just eyeball it across here, everything looks nice. So when I drill my holes here, I'm going to have a nice uh, straight line on my holes, and everything's going to work out well. Okay, we're going to work in the metric system for this, and the reason we want to work in the metric system is because when we start multiplying, uh, inches we end up in tenths and uh, tenths of an inch are really hard to work with unless you have a scale that's in tenths of an inch and since most rulers are in fractions of an inch that are uh, fractions of sixteenths or thirty seconds or sixty fourths um, you know that wouldn't work too well for us so what we want to do is we broke everything into the metric system into millimeters to make this nice and easy and our first our 
first our first mark we want to put at is a 34 millimeters. If you haven't worked with a with a with a uh, metric cooler for a little while, you know we start at zero, so that'd be 10, 20, 30 millimeters. So at 34 millimeters, we're going to mark a line right here, right before the, the five here. So we're at 34 millimeters on our first mark. Our second mark is going to be at 109. So we'll pan across here, and at 100. We're right here, and at 109, we'd be one before the 11 here. So there we go, 109. Our next measurement we're going to make is 229. We'll go across here again, and so we want to be at the 22. And at 22, we're right here, so 229. Make our mark right there. All right, next one is at 326. So at 326, we're going to be at the 32. Oh, we'll refocus that at 32. So at 326, we're going to be right here. And then the last one is at 423, which is in behind here a little bit. I have to zoom in so you can see that. And we'll try and get that focused. 423, 42, and 423 right there. All right, so now we got all of our points marked. And we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, get ready to drill our hole. All right, so we're going to use a step bit to drill the hole, and a step bit's set up so that it's different steps of an inch here. We got to set this at three eighths of an inch. So one easy trick to do is take a three eighths of an inch washer, slide it over the step bit, and you got to wiggle it on here because it's snug. And now this is exactly three eighths of an inch. And what will happen here when I drill my hole is this will act as a stop so that the drill won't go any further. And because this thing spins on here, it won't bite in and we won't drill through it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and line up. We're gonna drill a hole. First one's done. Second one. Third one's done, and then you can see here we ran into the gas line. Okay, we'll move that out of the way. All right, now we got all five holes in the duct. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up the instrument for the dimensions of the duct. And what I want to do here is I want to hit duct, just press the button once, it's going to ask me for the diameter, height, or width, and I'm going to hit enter on the, on the gauge here. It's a square duct, so it's flashing a square. I'm going to hit enter again. Now I'm going to enter my dimensions. My duct was 18 by 24. It doesn't really matter which dimension you put where, um, so I'm closer to 24, so I'm going to go ahead and put that there. It's just going to calculate an area and a CFM off that, and you can hold that button in, and it'll go up, and I'll speed up as you get there. And now I'm going to go back down, so 24, hit enter, and now I need to change this one to 18. I'm going to hold the key in, it'll climb up, it'll speed up as we start going. 56, 18, come back down, hit enter, and now I have my dimensions set. The STA2 has a couple of really nice features. Number one, it's got a magnetic back, so it can be somewhat hands-free operation. You can hang it up when, you're, when, you're, uh, when you don't have your hands on it. A couple things I want to make sure you understand about the probe shaft itself. The probe shaft has a flat on one side, and that flat is lined up with the sensor on the instrument. So you always want to have airflow running perpendicular to this, or straight in that hole, which is uh, perpendicular to this flat. When you, when you extend the cord out, or the wand out here, the cord extends up inside of the instrument. So a couple things you don't want to do is put the instrument against your stomach when you go to pull it back in, because you'll crank the cord up inside here and damage the cord. And you want to make sure that you, when you extend it out, you, you don't have it bound up into the bottom. There's 38 inches overall of probe length on this, so we got plenty of room there to work with. When I go ahead and insert the probe in, I want to make sure that I keep the probe nice and level going into the duct. I want to make sure I don't twist the probe uh, in the airstream. I want it going nice and straight in. And I want to make sure that I can go all the way to the back of the duct here and touch the back of the duct so that I get an airflow measurement across my entire profile. All right, there's two methods of traversing that we typically use. One is the time traverse and the other is the point traverse. Point traverses are typically done by guys that do TAV work, test, adjust, and balance work. And they do that because they have to record each individual point or location 
that they made the measurement in the duct. For the rest of the HVAC industry, we probably want to lean towards the averaging method. The averaging method is faster and it's more accurate. So we're going to use the averaging method. We're going to traverse our five holes that we have made in our duct. And I'm going to go ahead and set up the probe, turn on the fan, and get this thing rolling. Because we're going to make an average traverse here, what we want to do is press and hold the average button. We press and hold that button, you're going to see that it pops up here. It's going to say set at the top, and you're going to see a timer flashing right here in the bottom of the display. We're going to go ahead and press enter on the display, and it's going to bring up the timer on there. And it obviously we're at zero feet per minute because we aren't making any airflow measurement. Now, this hot wire is dampened, so it really won't start to read till we hit about 40 feet per minute of velocity. So it's not going to bounce around right here. That's stable and normal, and that's just the way it's going to set. When we press the enter button, you're going to see the timer start. If we press the enter button again, the timer will stop. And that will happen all the way through. And what it's going to do is every time we start the timer, it's recording the readings. When we stop the timer, it stops the readings. Then when we press the hold average button again, it gives us the average that's flashing here, which the average is now zero. And we're going to have our average reading in our duct. If we use our up and down arrows here, we can switch to average temperature, and we can also switch to average CFM. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this set up. We're going to make our measurement, and we'll see what our results are. All right, now we're going to go ahead and get, we're going to get our initial airflow measurement. And a uh, couple things here. I'm going to, I've got the instrument set. I've got the dimensions in. I'm going to go ahead and slide the probe shaft in the duct. Now, typically what I'm doing is I keep my finger on the top of the probe shaft on the flat so I have a reference as to where the position of the probe is. I slide it all the way into the back of the duct so it touches the back wall. And then all I have to do is press my enter key because I already have the timer set. I'm going to press the enter key. And at the same time, I'm going to start to slide the shaft out of the duct. And it's making the readings right now. Now I don't want to look at my meter. I want to pay close attention to my probe shaft's position to make sure I'm not turning my hand and I'm not uh, tipping the probe shaft to get the most accurate measurement. Now when I get to the end here, I just push enter again. That stops the measurement. I'm at 15 seconds. I'm going to go to the next hole here, go all the way to the back of the duct again. I felt it touch the back of the duct. Press enter again. Pay close attention to your shaft alignment. Slide it out. When I get towards the end here, I'm going to lift it up a little bit so I don't catch. And press enter again. Go to the next hole repeat the same process. We always want to make sure that when we're making airflow measurements that we take the time to do a complete five point traverse because the airflow in the center of the duct can be considerably higher than that of the edges. And depending on how the ductwork is designed, the airflow can be higher in any one particular location than another. You always want to make sure that you're making an accurate airflow measurement because the cooling operation is dependent upon it. All right, so we've got one more hole to do here. Pause. I'm going to slide my gas line over a little bit here. So I can get that in all the way. Touch the back of the duct. Press enter. And pause. All right, now we have, we're at 59 seconds total time. We need to get our average. So I'm going to go ahead and press the average button. And when I press the average button, you can see I got 1,722 CFM. If I hit the up arrow key, I can see my velocity is 574 feet per minute. Hit the up arrow key again, I'm at 69.7 degrees in my return air. Turn on my backlight, and then back to average CFM. So this is how we get average CFM in the duct. I'm at 1720. Uh, this is a three ton system which requires 400 CFM per ton, so that would be 1200 CFM. So I'm about 500 CFM high. I could actually slow that blower down. Alright, so after we're all done making our airflow measurement, we want to make sure we plug up these holes. We just got snap in plastic caps here. That can come out later if we ever have to remake our airflow measurement. This makes a nice, neat, finished job. Oops, I got one there. Quite make it in. Let's get that guy in there. There we go. Now we got a nice neat finished job, and we can use these holes again if we have to measure airflow. The Fieldpiece STA2 is a very easy to use, cost effective solution for contractors to measure airflow. This is a tool that everybody needs to have in their toolbox. Installers, service technicians all need to set airflow, and airflow, believe it or not, is a problem in about 7 out of 10 systems. So if you don't have an airflow measurement instrument, we highly recommend you look at the STA2. It's a very cost effective solution. Thank you for watching the video. This is Jim Bergman with True Tech Tools.